About 15 years ago, I went to a, uh, a medical conference. They had some doctors talking there about cancer because my wife had cancer at some point. And the doctors were experts in their field. They were experts on colleges. They had all of this technical jargon that they were using. But when it used to, went to using the microphone, they were really like amateurs, three stooges. They would be talking like this and saying, well, and then, and then, and then. <laughs> and then people in the back would be, we can't hear you. <laughs> and then they'd fumble with the microphone and turn, oh, is, is it okay now? Is it all right? And then they'd talk a little lo uh, longer, and then all of a sudden they were, we can't hear you again. It was, it was ridiculous because they had this little switch, and their hand automatically was turning the microphone off and on. And so out of that whole experience, I realized that as a speaker, and in Toastmasters, especially when you get to speak to outside groups, when you're talking to a group maybe more than uh, 50, 100 people, maybe hundreds of people, maybe if you want to be a TEDx speaker like Jim wants to be someday, that you will actually need to use a microphone of some sort. So I thought I'd talk about some of the different type of microphones that we can use, and I'll give you a couple of options. Let's talk about this particular microphone that we have here in Toastmasters. There are two basic type of microphones as far as directions are concerned. When you look at American Idol or you, you listen to the voice, you always notice that the singer has got that microphone pointed right toward their voice because it's a directional microphone. It's going to reject all the sound off to the right and the left. They don't want all that audience noise. They want just the microphone from their beautiful voice. In this case though, as the, the speakers and Toastmasters, and we can put a microphone up here. This is called an omnidirectional microphone. So while you still probably want it pointed at your, your voice, you can actually be a little bit off axis and talk over here, and the microphone is still going to pick up your voice. So that's the reason we wanted this omnidirectional microphone. And the other type of microphone that you would consider is a lavalier microphone. In a lot of cases, especially if you're doing some recording, you might have a lavalier microphone maybe at some of the contests. You know, you put that on here, you hide the microphone, and that's another option. The problem with that is you really can't control the, the volume. What I like about this particular microphone is I can talk softly and I can talk to the audience and I can try to get some emotion and I can get really loud and angry or if you're telling a joke you could go to the punchline and, and as Jim Boobash always says or Steve Winheim always says and we know what the punchline is there you can you can bring that microphone closer to your mouth you can bring it farther away to depending upon the volume that you really want to project So let's talk about some of the things that you need to know. Number one, Mike, Mr. Mike is a sensitive guy. I'm sure you've seen some of the movies and the lounge movies where they take this guy in there swinging it all around like that. Well, don't do that because Mr. Mike is a sensitive guy like Steve. You know, he's easily offended. He doesn't want to get his, you know, his feelings hurt. So, you know, try to respect him. Try to take care of him. Don't be banging around. Don't try to nail things with him. <laughs> Also, the most important part is be prepared. You need to get to know your microphone ahead of time. If you're going to speak, especially at some sort of organization or group, get there early, check out the microphone, make sure you understand what type it is, set up the amplifier, do a, like a little mic check before. In a lot of cases, you'll go to an empty room and you'll be, you'll be speaking and maybe somebody will be in the back and they'll say, hey Steve, is the volume okay? And they'll say, oh yes, I'm a, it's really good. Well, the problem is, is when you start getting 100 people in the room, all of a sudden that volume's not going to be quite good enough. So you're probably going to have to boost the volume a little bit. Also, you might want to check on the cord if you're going to use a cord like this. Is it long enough? You know, in most cases, if you're going to stand behind the lectern, you, you probably could get away with a short cord. But if you want to go into the audience and you want to move around a little bit, you probably want a little bit of a longer cord so that you can interact with the audience, you can maybe get their opinion. And uh, so check on the, the cord, make sure it's long enough. If you don't have one long enough, yes, ask, ask for the uh, facilities people to get one that's good for you. Also get a helper in the back. And in this case, if I was doing this, 
I probably get Steve in the back and I say, Steve, I want, I'm going to be looking at you if the volume's okay, if it's not okay, if you don't care, you know, <laughs> let me know. But you need somebody in the back of the room because in a lot of cases, you can sound fine. I was talking to Jim and he, Jim likes to have the, mic, the amplifier back over here on the chair. Well, the problem is, is if it's on the chair, I can't hear it very well in the back. And so that's why I actually moved the amplifier up a little closer here so that everybody in the back could actually hear what I'm saying. And also don't let Mr. Mike trip you up. In this particular case, especially if you're walking around, you see this cord here, it'd be very easy to get caught up with this uh, cord. So one of the things you can actually do is take the cord, and if you're a man, you can actually sort of put it behind your belt loop and hide it back that way so you can talk and it'd be less of an, uh, a chance that the microphone cord is going to trip you up because it can always happen. In a lot of cases we have a little rug over here that you can use so that's another option. And don't talk behind Mr. Mike's back and what I mean by this, in this case the doctors were talking and he would say well if you see it and he's talking, he's looking over here but the microphone is over here. You always want to be able to move the microphone with your head. Don't be going like this and changing because the, the audience is not going to be able to hear you. And again, especially with the directional microphone, you've got to have it pointed toward your mouth all the time. Uh, the other point is, is if you are working with the audience, if you got a Q&A session and I'm going to Yes, Steve. I see. Steve, well, what's your opinion of this manual situation? Obviously, you want the, the microphone pointed at Steve so he can talk into the microphone. One of the things you don't want to do is you don't want to give the microphone to Steve. <laughs> don't, uh, no, no, no. <laughs> you know, because if you get the, give that microphone away to somebody else, there's a good chance you're not going to get it back. And, it, you know, you're in for another you know, 30 minute dissertation on whatever's wrong with the United States. So go ahead, point it toward them, but then don't give them the microphone. Also practice, practice, practice. We tell people to practice their speeches at home, but also practice with the microphone. If you don't have a microphone, get a piece of wood, get anything, but hold it in your hand as if you're going to give the presentation. If you're going to be using PowerPoint, it's going to get even trickier. Because if you got a microphone in one hand and a PowerPoint control in your other hand, it's going to be a lot harder. In that case, you might actually want to use a lavalier mic to make, make sure so that you can gesture a little bit easier. Again, if you look at TED Talks, a lot of times they have a, a lapel or a lavalier mic microphone and you know they have that other PowerPoint control in their other hand. So you got to think of all of those things, but practice ahead of time. Practice and see how it works because it's a different feel, it's going to, to affect your speech and how well you do. Also don't take, and I don't know if you've ever heard stories of this, but if you've got a lavalier microphone, don't take it in the bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> I'm heard, sure you've heard the stories, and I did there. you hear them about, about every two or three years, somebody's taken it in there, I don't know if Lester Holt did that or somebody did that, and it's, it's pretty funny at the time, but don't, that's a no-no. Again, with the amplifier controls, the amplifier controls are over here. And if you're having trouble or if the, the sound is soft or something, again, you may want to have somebody sitting over there that can actually sort of, you can sort of give them the sign to boost the volume, to bring the volume down a little bit. It all depends, but it's good to have a helper. Also, you may have trouble with feedback. And this is, this is feedback. You know, you're talking and all oh, whoa. And so the only way you're going to know if you're going to have feedback is to actually get in the room, move around the room, try different locations and see uh, what your situation is. In some places you're, you're sort of stuck in one particular area because the room is so badly designed. So again, that's something that you need to do. Get to the meeting area early, try it out and see what's going on. Also try not to let Mr. Mike cover up your beautiful face. I was watching one of the shows last night and the speaker, or 
or actually the singer had his, the microphone just like this, and the only shot they could, they had a little camera shot this way, but I mean, if you're holding the microphone up like this, you're going to miss that beautiful Polish face that I have. So <laughs> pull it down a little bit, and make sure you, you know, the audience can see your face, and they can uh, you know, see what you're talking about. Again, if the microphone has an on-off switch, and again, we purposefully got a microphone that does not have one, but if it does have one, get a little tape and just tape it so that it's always on. You don't want to be switching that thing off and on. Uh, check for sounds in the other rooms. Again, if you're speaking in a hotel or, or some other convention center, the odds are you're going to be competing with the other, you know, the band or the other uh, group that's in that other room and you're going to have to know how to adjust the volume because there's going to be noise coming from that other room and it's, it's a, a little bit of a problem at times. I've also seen people play with the gooseneck. You know, people like to fidget and so they're and actually, so you actually need to check this. Sometimes it's loose, you know, and they're holding it and they're going like this. So make sure that gooseneck is on there get it in position and also you need to figure out how do you put this microphone into the the little handle here. How does it go in? Because they're all a little bit different. In this case, it just sort of fits right into the spot. You don't need to play with it. You don't need to fidget it. If the gooseneck is a little short, you don't really want to be bending over like this. I've heard people doing that. In this particular case, it's pretty large. Just You can actually speak. I guess if you're Dean Bone, you know, he's, he's up like this. Instead of leaning over, actually just take the, the microphone out and talk to the audience like this. You can actually take it out of the, the gooseneck. If you're not the speaker, but you're in charge of the program, and this might have to go with uh, Adam or some of the other leaders, say if you're doing a program at work, and Aaron, maybe if you're doing a program, if you got some other people, go ahead and take a few minutes and train the people on how to use the microphone. Because if they don't, they're going to be doing all of this weird stuff, and it's just going to detract from what your message is. And you really want your message to be the most important thing. And here's the last tip, and that is if you're going to do any outside speaking at all, uh, go ahead and buy a microphone. Now, most of the sort of the standard microphone is for speakers used to be what they call the Shure SM58. It's about $100, not that expensive. And well, the Chinese have gotten in, in, involved in the market now. They make a Shure knockoff they call it the PD Mic 58 for $20. It's, it's a heck of a microphone. If you're going out and you're going to speak to other groups, if you're actually going to develop an expertise in the field, spend the 20 bucks, get your own microphone, spend the 20 bucks, get your own cable. If you do all of those and you work with the microphone next time, people will say, you know what, that guy really was terrific. <laughs>